One mild Wednesday in February, 1797, the last invasion of Britain began. Round the corner from St. David's Head, four ships, flying English colors, hove into the rocky bay of Fishguard. Yet although the 1,400 soldiers were dressed in British uniforms, these were dyed a mottled black. In fact, half the men had joined the voyage straight from prisons in France, and several of them still wore wrist and ankle irons. Even the other half, the regular grenadiers, seemed the worst that the nation could supply. The men spoke only French, and called themselves La Légion Noire, the Black Legion. Three Irishmen among the officers were interpreters between them and their elderly commander, who spoke only a kind of English. He was an Irish-American named Colonel Tate. The plans of the generals in France had been simple. Obviously, many country folk in the British Isles would sympathize with the recent French Revolution, and they would join the invading army in marching against their government. It was a surprise, therefore, when from a fort on the harbor, members of the Welsh Home Guard, under Lieutenant Colonel Knox, defended the island of Britain. The fish guard fencibles scared off the enemy with blank shot from their eight cannon, since they daren't waste their ammunition all three rounds of it. On Thursday morning, Knox received orders to retreat inland to Haverford West. Along the way, he bumped into Baron Cordor, who was advancing on the coast with more volunteers on horseback and foot, pulling two guns in farm carts. Briefly, the invasion was forgotten as Cordor and Knox argued over who should be in command. Eventually, Lord Cordor took charge, and their combined units of 600 men hurried on to Fishguard. By this time, in the best tradition, the wealthier classes were fleeing the other way. Lord Cordor exhorted them to join him, and many did, together with the local peasantry. The army was now well equipped and would terrify any invader as well as cannon, pistols and sabers. Their weapons included mattocks and spades, pitchforks, billhooks and straightened scythes. The Frenchmen, meanwhile, had landed nearby at Carreguasted Point. By the light of Wednesday's moon, they had scaled the 200-foot cliffs and seized Trehowell Farm as Colonel Tate's headquarters. Out at sea, their frigates abandoned the landing party and left for France. The invaders had been well supplied with weapons, gunpowder and hand grenades, but they'd brought no horses and little food or drink. During Thursday, they raided the nearest farms, chasing after sheep and poultry and cooking them half raw over campfires. In addition, they found home-brewed beer and plenty of port wine. This had been salvaged by the locals from a Portuguese trader recently wrecked offshore. Soon the whole Black Legion, except for the colonel, were merrily drunk. One befuddled grenadier thought he heard the clicking of a musket, and he had enough fighting spirit inside him to kill the ticking grandfather clock. The Welsh, of course, fought back. One Frenchman was tipped down a well, another stunned with a chair leg. Lead from the roof of St. David's Cathedral, with permission from the Dean, was stripped for bullets. These were given to the country folk, men and women, who set off to the aid of Fishguard. One heroine was Jemima Nichols. She was a cobbler by trade, and especially brawny. Jemima discovered 12 Frenchmen in a field. Wielding a pitchfork, she rounded them up on her own and marched her prisoners to the local jail. By Thursday evening, 
Colonel Tate had had enough of his rabble army. They were either asleep, drunk, or mutinous, refusing to take orders from their officers. His headquarters were a mess. No food, living or otherwise, remained. Window frames had been smashed up for firewood, and mattresses cut up for clothing, their feathers drifting around the farmhouse. What's more, his officers reported red-coated soldiers slipping through the countryside, making their way towards Fishguard. Clearly, the Black Legion was outnumbered. It was time to surrender. On Friday morning, Tate agreed to assemble his men on Goodwick Sands to give up their weapons. Still hungry and hungover, the French troops marched down to the beach to the beat of their own drums. Lord Cawdor surrounded them on the hills above. By this time, the ranks of his male irregulars had been swelled by hordes of Welsh women. To those penned on the beach below, their red flannel shawls and tall black beaver hats resembled British uniforms. Colonel Tate realized his mistake. The extra soldiers seen by his officers had been the women in traditional dress, and the opposing army wasn't so big after all. But it was too late now. On Friday afternoon, he signed a note of surrender. Two days after it began, the last invasion of Britain was all over.